Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. It feels so weird to be back filming again because I was doing a video every single day in November and I haven't filmed in like two weeks now and I just feel very, very odd. But we're back now. Um, I hope everyone's doing well. In today's video, I wanted to throw it back a little bit and do a bit of a tag video, which is sort of what, where YouTube began back in, I don't know, 10 years ago now. We'd do all these tags um, where you'd have all these questions and you'd answer the questions, then like tag other people to do it. And I came across um, a mum tag and I'll leave the link down below for where I saw it. And it's actually an old video as well, but I thought I would revive <laughs> um, this tag and uh, answer how many questions do I have? I've got 14 questions. I'm gonna to try to make it quick and speedy, um, answering some things to do with motherhood and challenges and lessons I've learned and hacks and tips. And if you wanna see more like this, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Okay, the first question is favorite mum hack. And I have to say that for me, it's all about building habits. My biggest hack is habits because habits honestly will work for you like once you get your child into a routine be it what the things that you do in the morning be it the evening routine be it the way that you like have your meal time whatever it is that you know you need to kind of fix into a routine if you build them into habits what ends up happening is that your child actually will tell you like your child will work for you rather than you trying to get your child to brush their teeth and drink their milk and get into bed. They will tell you because they are creatures of habit. So for me, building habits are is very challenging. It's really difficult to stick with it in the beginning. But once that click has occurred, I don't care. Like my, my kids, honestly, like they are so habitual at this moment in time that even if I'm not doing the thing, they will tell me. <laughs> Okay, my most embarrassing mum moment. I had to think about this one a little bit, but I think I haven't had that many embarrassing moments. I think like my first year and a half of being a mum, uh, we were in lockdown, so I didn't really go out that much um, to get embarrassed about things. But I would say that on the top of my head, it would always be to do with like leaking. Um, because you know, when you're, when you're outside with your child and your child needs to feed, when they're really, really young, especially when it's time to feed, the child gets hungry, but also your milk releases itself. So you're just out and about doing your business and then you're like, uh oh, like, I, I, I feel a bit wet. Um, and then you look down and even, this is even like with breast pads and like with protection, <laughs> it still leaks through. And that's happened quite a few times to me in restaurants and when I've gone out and I've literally just had to like get my scarf and like put it in front of me or like get my jacket or my blazer and cover up. Yeah, that's pretty embarrassing. What part of the day do you love the most? I really love the evenings. I feel like it's a time that we get together, we have dinner, we talk about the day, we talk about what we've done, what we ate, um, and then we have like bath time, which is so much fun, um, then we brush our teeth, and then we have like bedtime, story time, and it's like, it's such a kind of family, like unison time, it's a time that we are, we're all gonna be in this room, talking about our day, like having a good time, and it's just a lovely like end of the day. We say I love you. We have you know big kiss, big hug, and then we just go our separate ways. And I and I just love it. And then on the flip side, my least favorite part of the day is it has to be mid afternoon, like a Saturday or Sunday mid afternoon. So around like three o'clock. So they've had their lunch, they've had their nap. It's three o'clock, so it's not quite like six, seven bedtime. It's like an odd time. We haven't gone out. Everyone's just like groggy and tired and can't be bothered. <laughs> And I actually don't know what to do with them. So we just end up, I don't know, we just end up doing random stuff in the house, but it's just like, I just don't know what to do sometimes. The worst thing that someone has said when I was pregnant, honestly, I didn't get that many, I didn't get any um, bad comments, but I think the worst thing for me was hearing people say, oh my God, you're so small. Um, and I, that doesn't sound bad. It sounds like a compliment because obviously you don't want to be big, right? Like the, the opposite is what you don't want. But being small is also not good because um, you think to yourself, oh, what, is my baby not big enough? Like, am I not eating the right things? Like, is my baby not healthy enough? Like, why is my baby so small? And I, I had so many pregnant friends at the same time, at the same stage. So I was six months flat stomach and they were six months massive stomach. So I was like, why is my baby not growing? Like, you have, you have these doubts in your head and when someone's like, oh my God, you're so small. It is a compliment, but actually, to me, I'm already worried, like worried about the baby being small. Um, and I remember because Sophia and my first my first child was actually small, like weight-wise. He was born at 2.6 kg. 
So that's like medically small basically. So I remember going to the doctors, all the, like the scans all the time and them saying like, oh, it's, it's a bit small, but it's fine. And obviously when someone else comments about you being small as well, then it's just like, oh, okay. So like, what do I need to do to like make my baby bigger? And it's actually nothing you can do. Um, and he's completely, he was completely healthy and fine, but it's like commenting on like the size of a bump um, is probably not a good thing to do because you never know what like that person is thinking in their mind. Did you co-sleep? Uh, yes and no. So no in the sense that it was never the plan to co-sleep. Like I didn't, I wouldn't want to co-sleep personally, but yes, sometimes. So like if the baby was crying um, and I had to feed and it was just easier to leave her, him or her in the bed, then I would just leave him or her in the bed. Like it was fine, but then I would always have the intention to put her back or him back. So um, I never wanted to co-sleep like fully because I just wanted my space and I wanted, I never wanted it to be a habit and a routine of like sleeping together because that's when I don't get any sleep and I need to have my sleep. Um, but yeah, we didn't really co-sleep. It was just like the odd night here and there when they were sick or ill or like crying or having some regression or teething or whatever, but generally no. Something that you bought but you didn't use. I actually am quite a reactive buyer. So I'm the kind of, I'm the kind of person who, with, with kids stuff anyway, <laughs> that I think about, I don't buy it until I need it. So when I need something, then I'll buy it. So then that's why like I haven't not used anything. But the thing that I would say I used the least is um, swaddles. Um, so when, when Sufyan was really small, I swaddled him up. Um, because that was like what I read and I did all my research and I saw a little cute little like burrito bun baby and I thought it was so cute. So I got a few swaddles and I did it on him. In the beginning, I probably used it for like three months in the beginning and it worked re uh, like really well. But with Maria, I never used it, not even one day. I think I used it one day and she escaped out of it. Like literally didn't use it at all. So for three months, is it really worth buying like quite expensive swaddles? No. Um, so yeah, I would say that's probably the least used thing. Three hospital bag must-haves. <laughs> um, don't judge me with these must-haves, okay? I'm not talking about essentials. Essentials, we all know what they are, but must-haves, I'm gonna say the Instamax camera to take your first cute picture of the baby and you can keep it. Um, and then a dressing gown. You underestimate like how cold you are going to be. And for me, I took a dressing gown with me and it just meant that I could like swaddle my baby as well. So while she was feeding, well, while Sufyan was feeding in hospital, um, I would like hug him around the dressing gown. They're so tiny, they fit completely inside it. So I'd hug him around. And I think there's one point where his temperature was a little bit low. So the doctors were like, um, keep him, do skin to skin. So having a dressing gown so I can put him skin to skin and then have a dressing gown on top, it's such a lifesaver. And then even if you're like lying in bed, being in the dressing gown and then being under the bed sheets, uh, just that warmth and that coziness and having a hood is great because it, like if you're a hijabi and you want to cover up, you have that hood available to you when the doctor comes in. Um, and also because it's an open, um, having accessibility to uh, like breastfeed easily and just kind of cover up again. Um, yeah, dressing gown 100%. Oh, and pockets as well, like putting your phone in if you need to go and have a little walk or something. Yeah, lifesaver. And then the third thing is chocolate. Just because I feel like you need that energy and something sweet and, and comforting is, yeah, a win. <laughs> are you a routine mum uh, or are you a go, go with the flow mum? I am a routine mum. However, like saying that, like I feel like I'm go with the flow at times, but I'm definitely a builder routine where routines need to be. So like morning, evening, um, going out, like certain activities where I feel like I want routines to work for me, I will have a routine because it means that we all know what we're doing. Like we all know, we, I don't need to tell you because we know, like we come home, we take our coats off, we take our shoes off, we put them down. Like that's a routine now. I don't even tell Sufyan to do it, he's two. He just takes his coat off and takes his shoes off. Like it's a routine. And that's what I mean in the beginning by like letting those routines work for you. Because once you've set, once you've set them down, you don't have to tell your child every day, take your shoes off when you come home because that is the habit. <laughs> they actually don't know any different. And what does bedtime look like? Bedtime looks like it starts around six o'clock, have dinner, um, have a bath, um, brush tea, no, have milk in that order, have milk. Depends on how quickly this has, has occurred, but in between there, probably like just tidy up a little bit, um, organize clothes, get clothes ready for tomorrow, pack bags for the next day. Um, and then yeah, brush teeth, bedtime story, bed. So usually bed is around seven o'clock. Um, so bedtime starts around 5.36, ends at seven. What type of labor did you have? So I had two different, like two very different labors, but also quite similar. So the first one was in the hospital um, and it was 
unmedicated, well, uh, Gassonair. Is that unmedicated? Gassonair towards the end. And then the second one was at home, like right here. <laughs> and yeah, unmedicated as well. Have you ever been mum shamed? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so. I won't, I don't think so. <laughs> I, pro I probably wouldn't even notice it if I was. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, apart from like the odd comments I might get on like social media saying, oh, this and that, but like, that's not mum shaming. They don't know me, they're just projecting. Um, yeah, I don't think so. And I wouldn't recommend it either. I mean, why would you want a mum shame? Everyone's doing their best. The biggest challenge that you faced being a mum, um, I, you know, honestly, if I was thinking about this, I was thinking like, what, what, what is a challenge? And I mean, there's so many challenges, but I think for me, the biggest challenge has to, has to be like not living in the moment, uh, like trying to live in the moment basically. Cause I feel like I think a lot about the future. So like what, what I want, like where I see my kids and like what I want them to not do, but like how I want them to be as people and like what I want them to learn and like where they want to go and where we want to be and all these things. These are like 20 years from now, like inshallah, if we're still alive. Um, and I think like I forget that right now is important to like live in right now. Like what are they up to right now? Like what are they doing right now? What are they loving right now? And obviously I do do it, but a lot of the time I'm always like, okay, let's do this thing because it will help them in five years. Like let's do this thing because it will help them in 20 years time. But actually I should really be thinking that is good as well, but obviously I should also be thinking like what, what could I do right now in this moment in time to make them just happy right now? Um, and I think I need a better balance of the two because a lot of what I think about is how can I invest in their future? Um, and that's like a challenge for me because I'm a, I'm a planner as, as a person, I am a planner. So I've only known to plan things for myself as an adult, but I've never had to like take a child from childhood to adulthood. So it's definitely a, a, a bit of a learning process where I have to like learn how to be a mum in the moment and enjoy the moment, um, but also think about the future too. The best advice that has helped me and transformed my mindset about a mum, this has to be uh, similar to what I just said before, has to be the fact that everything is temporary, like everything is fleeting, and actually you end up forgetting a lot of the pain that you've, you went through. Both physical, mental, stress, everything, you actually forget it. And you know, you probably are, if you're going through something difficult right now, um, sleep training, teething, labor, whatever it is, like you probably think there's no way, like I'm never gonna get over this. It's like, you, you genuinely forget it. Like I have completely forgotten the, the bad sleep times that Sufyan had really bad. Maria was pretty good, but with Sufyan, like his sleeping was so bad. We'd spend two, three hours just laying there trying to get him to sleep every single night. Like it was really bad. Um, and I remember thinking like, we're never gonna get through, like we're never gonna get through this, but you do and it gets so good. And I've actually forgotten those, I don't, that, that time is a blur. And I think like in that moment, if you can just remember to yourself, like be patient, love the moment, do your best, um, be kind. Um, remember that it's so temporary, like it's literally gonna be six months max and you'll be out of this situation um, and they'll be on their next, <laughs> you know, their next challenge or their next developmental stage. But that's the biggest advice because like through all the difficult, I think my main difficulties have been food related, um, what else? Food related, sleep related, and like work-life balance related. Those are the three main things. And they've all like solved themselves because I've just like let it play out and been patient with it. But in that moment, I remember feeling so like, they're never gonna eat. They, 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 the food's on the floor. They're not eat. like, they're not gonna be hungry. They're gonna die of starvation. <laughs> they're not gonna die, right? So um, I think that's definitely like a big one. Remembering that everything is temporary and that you will get through it. Um, and and just do your best in the moment and uh, have no regrets. Um, but yeah, I hope that you found this interesting and I hope that you learned something new about me as a mum. And uh, if you are a mum, feel free to use this tag and leave, leave me your comments down below as well with answering any, how about you choose two questions and answer two of them and I wanna read your questions and I'll respond. Um, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.